All right, in this video we're going to do conditional probability. Now, conditional probability, uh, at, at least when, the way I'm going to do it right now, hopefully should make some sense because it will get a little bit more complicated later in this series. So let's just get started with the example. Okay, so I have a group of boys. So B for boys. And I'll have girls. And then I'll have M, a group M, which stands for people who like math, which I hope is everyone, but I understand that if you don't. All right, so let's look at a big group of people here. And in this group, okay, I'm going to split it up into two separate groups, mutually exclusive too, by the way. And we have one group for boys and then the other group for girls. And then I'm going to make a third group, and this group is going to be for math. Now, this math group, some of them are girls, some of them are boys, so I know that they're, it's possible for them, for the group M, to kind of overlap or cross over. Okay, so this would be M for the people who like math. All right. Now, I know I'm going to have some people in here. Okay, the people in here, they are the boys who do not like math. The people in here are boys who do like math. These are the girls who like math. And these are the girls who do not like math. So let me just label them uh, in set notation so I can refer back to them a little bit later. So this will be B and M complement because you're not you're a boy and you do not like math. This would be you're a boy and you like math. This is you're a girl and you like math. And this would be you're a girl and you do not like math. All right, so to help with this example, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put figures in here to represent the boys and girls who do and do not like math. Okay, now that I have some people in here, let me just explain this one more time. So we have, these are my boys, and I have four in here. This represents boys who do not like math. There's one boy who does like math. Looks like we got two girls who like math and then two girls who do not. And I represent the people who like math uh, with these hearts. All right, so again, this is conditional probability, so we ha we're not there yet. Uh, I just want to go over two examples before we get to that, and then we'll get into the conditional probability. So my first example, what is the probability that you select a boy? All right, now the way that we do probability like this Okay, we're dealing with all of these people. What are the chances that I pick out a boy? Randomly select someone in here that's a boy. So you ask yourself, well, how many boys are there? Okay, likes math, doesn't like math, don't really care, just how many boys are there? And if you count them up, we got five. Out of how many people could I have possibly picked? So we got five boys, six girls, so that would be 11. So the probability that you select a boy, so let me put that up here, the probability of a boy, 5 out of 11. And I do want to write that as a decimal, so let me just check what that is. All right, so that's 0.45. Okay, just round the two decimals. Okay, follow-up question. What is the probability that you choose someone who likes math? So same logic. What, how many people like math? Because again, I'm randomly selecting someone here. What are the chances you pick someone who likes math? Well, how many people like math? Well, here's your math region right here. And how many people are in there? So if you can count, you see three. So let me put that down as three. Out of how many possible number of people could I have chosen from, and it looks like 11 again, right? So the number of people who like math were 3 out of how many total people? 11. So probability that you like math, 3 out of 11. Oops. All right, so as a decimal, 
Okay, would be 0.27. Okay, so clearly not the same, right? All right, so a follow-up to that. Now we're getting into the conditional probability here. What is the probability that you're a boy? Okay, and you might think, oh, it's 5 out of 11. I know that. Well, no. What's the probability that you're a boy given, that's what this vertical line stands for, given you like math? Okay, so this is a little bit different. Okay. Because, yeah, we probability of being a boy, we said, is 5 out of 11. But what this given thing here stands for, and that's what conditional probability is all about, is it's the probability of an event, in this case, being a boy, what's the probability of being a boy, but we're restricting our, I guess you could say, like, restricting our population. I don't really want to say that, but restricting the people that we can choose from. We're restricting it to only people who like math. Okay, so if you were to look up here, all right, we're, we're really asking, what are the chances that you pick a boy when you're only looking at the people who like math? Now, who likes math? These people. So you can literally just ignore all this because all I'm looking at are these people. So what are the pro what's the probability that you pick a boy given, or it's the probability it's a boy given you're in math or you like math, where you can clearly see there's only one boy in here out of three that I can choose from. So the probability that you're a boy given you like math is one third. Well, if you come over here, can you see how they actually, this answer looks nothing like these. I mean, this is five out of 11. This is 3 out of 11. This is 1 over 3. I mean, none of these look the same. But that's the that's the downside with conditional probability for some is that they confuse this. The probability of being a boy and the probability of being a boy given some condition. Hence, conditional probability. Okay, so let's try another example. Okay, let's find the probability that you are a, let's do the probability that you like math given you are a girl. Okay, so what's the probability you like math given that you are a girl? Well, over here, just so we know or don't forget, the probability that just someone, randomly someone from this group anywhere, likes math is 3 out of 11. But now we're saying, what's the probability you like math? But let's only look at the girls. So let's, we're only dealing with these people right here, okay? So maybe you can see from here, all right, if you're dealing with only the people, or only girls, how many girls are there? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, and how many of them like math? Two. Okay, so the probability that you like math, given you're a girl, would be two, these right here, out of the six possible girls. So again, that's conditional probability. It's restricting the number of people we can deal with. Okay. But now I want to do something a little bit different. And this is going to get into the formula for conditional probability. And that is this. If you're being asked to find the probability of m given g, so the probability that you like math given you're a girl. Well, one thing has to be certain. You have to be. You have to like math and be a girl, right? Because if you're not, if you're not in here, you're not going to answer this question, right? Probability that you are, you like math, given you're a girl, means you have to like math and be a girl. But since we're restricting us to just people who like, or sorry, people who are girls, we have to divide by the probability that you're a girl. Okay. And that right here is the conditional probability formula. But let's see if it works. Okay, because what we get previously are we had two out of six. So let's see if that's what we get. We do it this way. So what is the probability that you like math and you are a girl? Now notice that this is not a conditional probability right here. This is simply out of all of the people that I'm talking about, and I'm, I'm talking about everyone now, 
out of everyone, what's the chances that I pick someone who's a, who likes math and is a girl? And that's these people right here. All right, and there's two of those. But I'm dividing that because we're dealing, we're dealing with probability, so it's two out of however many people I could choose. And that's all, how many do we have? 11. Okay. Only, the only time you change what you're dividing by, this is actually important right here. The only time you, ch you change what you're dividing by is if it's conditional. Okay. If you're just asked, what's the probability of liking math and being a girl? Well, it's the two out of the entire set of people, which is 11. Now, what's the probability of being a girl? Well, that was 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 out of, well, everyone in this set, which is, includes the boys, too. So 6 out of 11, your chances of being a girl. And if you reduce this, you get 2 out of 6, which I hope you can see is exactly what we got over here. All right, so this is our conditional probability formula, which you'll actually see written in two different ways. This is one of them. And the other one, let me write here is, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the, the probability of G over to the other side. So it will be the probability of M given G times the probability of G equals the probability of M and G. Because we're going to need this later. Actually, we'll need both. It really depends on, I mean, when we get into word problems or it depends on what uh, the problem's given you, you're going to need one of them. So make sure you memorize both. Okay, so that is conditional probability. Hopefully that helps. And again, make sure that you memorize these two formulas.